Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist of WealthPress. Today's Friday, it's August 26th, and it's 8.17 in the morning. The market's gonna open up in about an hour and 13 minutes, give or take. And folks, if you're enjoying these videos, post some comments. I wanna see some comments below these videos. I do read them. I've been spending a lot of time doing these videos, and I wanna make sure you're getting your money's worth so to speak. Anyways, let's get into today's analysis. The Nasdaq is down after having a nice little rally end of day yesterday. Uh, the Dow's down 48 points. Honestly, in light of the Fed data that's coming out our way in a little bit, which I'll get to in a second, this isn't really anything to be uh, nervous about. Matter of fact, I kind of like when markets open up a little lower and gain as the market continues. But honestly, in light of the volatility we've been having, you know, 47 points on the Dow when the average volatility is between 400 and 700 points a day. It's just, it's just not that much. Now, in about 12 minutes, we're going to have the personal income and outlays report. They're looking at personal income to be 0.6, which is kind of right in between, and personal consumption expenditures to be a little bit on the low end. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for the core uh, price, the, the personal consumption expenditures index to go higher. I want to see this number higher. That means investors are spending more money than they were a year ago. And I'd love to see this number increase over a month. That would give us some, some ammunition going into today's uh, 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 Jerome Powell, Wyoming uh, meeting. Uh, it'll give us some ammunition that things may be getting better. Um, let's see here personal consumption. Again, these are the expectations and we're going to know in about 11 minutes. So the big number is personal income, whether it's going to come in uh, above or below 0.6. As you can see here, we're like right in between. Then you've got the core year over year. And I'm looking for that number to be above 8.7. Honestly, the expectations, the way they're positioned right now, they're not that bad. I mean, unless the numbers are totally out of whack. As you could see here, most of these expectations are in line. The, the price index month over month looks a little wacky, but even though it's low, it's still on the upper end of the range. So let's see how that comes out. That's gonna come out in 11 minutes. Then we've got international trades and goods and services. That'll reflect on the bottlenecks and on how China's doing because that's the second biggest exporter and the biggest economy in the world, the biggest exporter in the world. Then you've got consumer sentiment which won't really mean much in light of all the news we've already seen. It would mean typically quite a bit if it came out on Monday, but for some reason, they wanna put one of the most important reports all the way till the end. I'm not gonna, I'll just leave that alone. And then you have Mr. Jerome Powell speaking about the future of our economy. I, I'm, I'm very curious if he's going to talk about lowering rates, increasing rates. I mean, it, it, with him, anything is on the table. One thing, you know, I loved about Greenspan. He was very consistent. I mean, maybe a little bit too consistent. It was kind of like I am in my analysis, really consistent. And I am. I'm really consistent. You won't see me going back and forth a lot. But uh, this guy, man, this guy, he sings one song, then he gets reappointed. I don't want to say reelected. It's reappointed. And then he's singing a different song. I don't know if he, I don't know if anybody up there is driving the bus. I'm not a big fan of this guy. I'm being honest with you. Investors focused on Jerome Powell's speech at the federal will be focused on his speech in Jackson Hole meeting for signs of when the U.S. central banks trying to cool off inflation that's running at a multi-year or multi-decade high might, might raise rates again and by how much? Traders worried that the Fed's four rate hikes this year plus increases by central banks in Europe and Asia might completely derail the global economy. That's why I'm focused on global economy because it's not just U.S. economy. And by the way, uh, you know how U.S. economy had a really strong rally in stocks the last couple of months? The global economy did not. Just saying. Some expect the Fed to reverse course and start cutting rates in 2023 due to signs that U.S. economy might be cooling off. It would be very interesting, but I don't think we're there yet. I think that's just a little opt too optimistic. Global markets have swung between optimism about strong corporate profits and unease about possible recession risk. On Thursday, the government reported, that's yesterday, that U.S. economy didn't contract by as much as previously thought during the spring. It shrank by 0.6%, less than 0.9%, and, and, and spending is better. That's the key. Investors are hoping for clarity from Powell 
after Fed officials said they'll support rate hikes despite hopes inflation might be peaking. Now, let me tell you my analysis. I think they're going to stay within 0.50 or 0.75 for the foreseeable future. Um, they may slow down as the year comes to an end. But right now, if the market stay, plays ball and the market is playing ball and the bond market's not really breaking lower, they're going to keep raising rates because if they can keep raising rates without impacting the long bond, it'll stabilize the stocks. It'll stabilize a lot of the stocks. Now, the key here right now, as I've been mentioning to you, if you look at the tech stocks and you look at the consumer stocks, the question is, are they going to come back into this range or not? And I believe, based on what I'm seeing, they are going to come back come back into this range the uh, tech stocks are already almost there if you look at, at um, if you look at um, healthcare you'll see that healthcare I believe is almost there in that in that channel see that it's in that channel uh, let's see basic materials uh, let's see here let's see how basic materials look like they're breaking out but again the question is are we going to go back into this range or not this is where that 8.6 hump is. So uh, I don't know if we're going to get there or not. Now, put the call ratio. I want you guys to see this. It's still highly, highly bearish. So there is some, some, some firepower for, for the bulls once they start waking up. But they're not waking up yet. The market is still severely depressed in a bearish mode. And you can see that by looking at the performance, by looking at this index and looking at all the sectors that are out of whack and are look at how much red you have here and look at how much green you have here. This is what controls the market. And unfortunately, a lot of these stocks, a lot of these stocks that are above the 200 day moving average are going to revert lower. Also, if you look at the small caps, you've only got 40% above the 200 day moving average. If you look at the Dow Jones, you got 51%. If you look at the NASDAQ, 36%. And remember, this was at 97. Let me just show you how it's cooling off already. See how it's it's cooling off? I drove a little line here. It's cooling off. And it's going to continue cooling off till it comes down. But when you look at the big picture, when you look at this, it's like, what? This is not a rally. This is a little bump. And I think this will just come right back down. I don't see much upside here, at least for now now if you're looking at individual sectors you've got energy utilities industrial but but on a monthly basis energy utilities industrial no, not much change but i want to show you something interesting on a monthly basis on a on a uh, short-term basis if you look at the stock market let me just get the right page here right here look at the last five days Defensive, 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 defensive. Yesterday, or let's look at under a month. Look at consumer discretionary tech. Notice they're not leading anymore. Energies, utilities, industrial. So I think consumer discretionary, that trend, that uptrend we had in tech and consumer discretionary is going to uh, fade away and the defensive stocks are going to start rising again. Matter of fact, if you look at communication services, it's already almost down back at the base. Look at that. Came down all the way here. So so I'm not expecting all that much upside from these stocks in the, in the near term. Now, I want to talk to you guys about something very, very, very important. Now, when we look at the NASDAQ 100, uh, let me just go to QQQ. When you're looking at the NASDAQ 100, the key right now is whether or not it's going to break this level right here, this hump. And I think it will. I think it's going to break this hump and it's going to move back into this channel very, very similarly to what we're seeing with the bond market. All right. Very similar. Now, here's the other part of the coin. If bonds break lower, that's going to push, that's going to put a lot of pressure on the stock market because that's going to tell us that investors and traders and the Fed believe that the Fed is going to continue raising rates. If this stays choppy like we're seeing right now, that's going to give us a wait and see period. And what that means is look at the small caps like ARK stocks. Look at how they're just kind of in that range. They look a lot like bonds, right? Well, that's what I'm talking about. So if bonds fall down, so will the small caps and we'll have another bleed. And that's what we're trying to uh, avoid right now. So you got to keep your eye on the bond market because the bond market is setting our, giving us directional bias right now, especially for the tech and the consumer stocks. Now, now, I want to talk to you guys about something else that's really, really cool. Apple. Everybody knows Apple, right? 
So Pattern Trader, my, uh, my premium program, just signaled, literally just signaled the trade right here on Apple. Let me just go here, right here. It signaled the trade on Apple on the 24th, which was right here, right here on this date. We got in on the 24th, and guess what? Yesterday, we got out for a juicy, let's see here, 20-point, um, 16% return. Getting in here, getting out here. 24 hours, no day trade. Now, guess what? This is our 15th winner in a row. That's right. We got in on Wednesday. We got out on Thursday. Now, folks, I don't know about you, but this is the 15th winner in a row in Pattern Trader. And the odds of statistically hitting 15 winners in a row are over 1 in 32 or 35,000. The odds of getting hit by a lightning is 1 in 10,000. So the odds of us doing this based on random, if you guys think on market or random, the odds are 1 in over 35,000. I don't think it's random. <laughs> I don't think it's random. So uh, I like what I'm seeing right now. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're interested in learning how we generated 15th trade in a row and how we generated 15 winners in a row, I'm going to tell you, I'm going live tomorrow on Saturday just for you, August 27th at 10 a.m. Eastern time. That's right. And I'm going to give all the details of way of how the strategy works. Now, by the time I'm done on Saturday, you'll be able to spot the patterns on your own. Plus, I'll give you the exact entry and exit rules that I use with this strategy. All you've got to do is show up. So get ready to learn something new. Tomorrow, 10 a.m., it's happening. It's going to be very, 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 very cool. 15th winner in a row. If you guys participated in this trade, send me a love letter, support at marketgeeks.com. Follow the link below. Learn about Pattern Trader. 15 winners in a row in the last three months. Not bad, right? I can't even calculate profit factor because I need a loser to calculate the profit factor and we haven't had one. That's the problem to have, right? 15 winners in a row. Let's celebrate Pattern Trader. Follow the link below. Check out what's new. And remember, we've got a big, big reports coming out. Personal income and inter international trades and goods and services. Mr. Jerome Powell speaking. You definitely, definitely, definitely want to stay in touch with the market today. If you have any questions, support at marketgeeks.com. Talk to you later. Have a great weekend, but not till after Pattern Trader tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. If you don't know where it is, or if you can't find the link, it's in the YouTube descriptor or below this video. Bye, guys. Take care.